In three, two, one. Nani? <laughs> nani, nani. <laughs> nani. Yo, no, everyone. Welcome to Filmmaker Mike and the Boys. This is the WandaVision episode eight review. Joining me is Sequester Jester. Who's your daddy? No, hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. Uh, Jesse is my daddy. All right. And oh, his his <laughs> oh, this is his name? Wow. Yeah. Oy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So there goes my dream of entering this podcast into an, a podcast award show for professional. Hey, why not? For professional. Hey, we're, we're professionally. We're as far as hello. clear intros, oh. that shit sucked. <laughs> Well, just, you know, my man, there's I'm always the mute button. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to mute everyone and then I'm just going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, do it, man. I would die. Oh, boy. The best. No, no, no. I'm kidding. All right. So WandaVision, episode eight, which is appropriately titled previously on dot, dot, dot. The nine. longest episode to date. 46 episode nine, minutes. Episode nine. Episode nine. Huh? Is it eight or nine? Eight. Is it nine? This is eight. No. I'm sorry. Are you the host, Kuya? No. I didn't think so. Oh, he's asking. He's asking a legit. I'm asking. Thing. Yeah. So. Why don't you shut up, Jester? Oh my so gosh. So this shut was up. episode eight, and then uh, the the last episode is episode nine. But episode eight. So right now, as of right now, this is the longest episode at forty six minutes. Forty however, minutes. <laughs> however 40 minutes it, with the lord of the rings trilogy like titles um so i just literally rewatched it the actual episode is 38 minutes so <laughs> eight, well but then again um spoilers there is a mid credit scene uh, so eight minutes eight seconds of uh credits and then of course at the beginning you have a recap of what happened so far uh, so there. That was that was such a privileged, uh, such a privileged uh, mid credit scene. You know? So this is the penultimate episode of this. This is yeah. the. It should be the last one. Is next week is the last one, right? I know. Yes. However, Disney Plus Instagram account posted something on uh, yesterday that confused me, because they posted a preview of episode eight that's now streaming. And then on the caption, they said two episodes to go. So that confused me. But then everyone seems to be saying episode nine is the last episode. And the, the episode, I guess, they're referring to is the behind the scenes making of, which I think, uh. which I think is titled um, Assembled or something like that, where it's basically like the Mandalorian gallery episode that we got which is like an hour for season two. For season one, we got several episodes focusing on different aspects of The Mandalorian. But um, I guess they're just now doing one big episode focusing on the whole show. So I don't know why they would refer to that as an episode because that's not within the story itself. So it's just, a, you know. Or maybe it is. Maybe. I mean, who knows at this point, right? Uh, so yeah. Uh, Friday at midnight, of course, uh, the app crashed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Kuya? Yeah. Yeah, it did. That's, that's, why, that's why I posted on the private chat, uh, oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> yep. That, uh, that GTA 3 uh, uh, meme. So. Yeah, so I got some in and out, got home, nice. and then... I was just trying to log in on my name because it was on my daughter's name, the Disney Plus account, and just transferring to my name, it was, the app was not working. It was like, oh, retry again. We're having several issues. I'm like, I'm just trying to switch the account profile and you're yeah. giving me this shit, Disney. For my $6.99, <laughs> you're giving me this shit. But I mean, it didn't take too long. I mean, it worked eventually. So I guess it's nice to kind of just let everyone else like go ahead, you know, and then just follow after. So when the episode kicks in, we get the um, the the recap of what previously happened on WandaVision. 
And then we start off with uh, Agatha's origin story. And we're set right into Salem, Massachusetts in 1693. Mm. And my goodness, the de-aging technology that they have utilized in the mm. Marvel Cinematic Universe and now in the Marvel uh, TV series as well is fantastic because she looked really great. I mean, Catherine Hahn looks great right now. Mm-hmm. But the yeah, fact so that was, yeah, the fact that they were able to de-age her and make her look like how she would that how the character would have looked like several hundred years ago in 1693. Wow, <laughs> amazing. So there's this procession of the, the witches where they basically tie her up into, uh, is it like a stake? Like they're going to burn her? Yeah, they're going to burn. They were, they were just going to, they tied her up with, um, with magic and they, they were going to burn her with magic or something. That's right, the coven. So the mother tells her like, uh, Agatha Harkness, you've dabbled with uh, evil magic beyond your age and your um, station or something like that, where it's mm-hmm. like she's not ready for that yet. And then all the sisters start chanting and then they start blasting her with magic. And as if like, she's pretty much gonna, she's gonna die. Nope. And then out of nowhere, purple magic like uh, flies out of her. And then all the sisters basically die. They turn old and like they basically lose the life out of them and they just shrivel and die. And then the mother of the coven is left. And Agatha, by the way, when she does this, she's begging, please don't, I can be good, I can change. And the mother is like, no, you can't. And so the mother like basically charges up and like starts shooting her. (laughs) I've got anime voices stuck in my head now. All they need to do is like, start like, Kamehameha! <laughs> um, so the mother of the coven like blasts her, and she, mo- the mother of the coven even like levitates and floats above. And like, you think, like, oh, she's got this, but of course, not. Um, Agatha uh, fights back basically, and her, her, uh, her hands that were tied uh, come loose from the magic, and then she fires back at the, the mother of the coven. And the mother of the coven dies. Yeah. So, and then that's basically it. We start uh, the Marvel credits. And then interestingly enough, and we're very used to seeing the Marvel Studios logo be, uh, with a red color on uh, the background. But this time it's purple because for Agatha Harkness's uh, power, as we know, that's her, that's her color. But appropriately enough, Wanda's power is red. The hex magic, the chaos magic is red. And so after that, um, we're back to where we left off last week. Um, we're in Agatha's dungeon. And um, what's this? Uh, Wanda basically says, like, Where's, where are my children? And then Agatha straight up says, like, where are my children? Like with the accent. And she even says that accent comes and goes. So Wanda seems virtually powerless. And Agatha explains to her that there's those runes in that, um, in that space that she's in the center of. She can't uh, conjure any of her chaos or hex magic. Um, Agatha basically has her. And so Agatha wants to find out how she basically got to take over Westview and how a witch like her with no formal training like Agatha is like so powerful. Like, how'd you do it? She wants to find out how'd you do it? And it basically reminded me of Harry Potter in a sense because Harry Potter or Harold Potter for Pinhead. (laughs) um, (laughs) Harry Potter is basically born and he's just gifted naturally unlike other wizards in Hogwarts and other wizards around the world in the world of Harry Potter, they have to actually learn and train for that shit. The boy who lived Harry Potter or Harold Potter just is magically like magic. Like he's got it. That's it without, without so much formal training. So that's how, that's what uh, it kind of reminded me of that. Um, 
So Agatha's just like, how'd you do it? Like, let's go, let's, let's find out. So she basically does um, uh, a whole, like she opens a door. Agatha uh, casts a spell with, with a door and then or she, she also does um, give a brief demonstration of uh, some spells to Wanda. Like she uses that, was it a bug or a fly? Some kind of like- It was the, the fly from, from the last episode. Yes, the fly that was on the, the curtain. So when she sees that, she shows her that, oh, she can make it fly, mm-hmm. she can make it transform, and then she can even have it like kill itself. Like she, it flies into the, the rabbit's mouth or the rabbit like snatches it up. And then she, uh, Agatha opens a door, she conjures a ma- uh, spell, and then she tells Wanda, let's go find out. So she goes basically back to the past. We're in Sokovia. She opens the door. We're in Sokovia. Uh, when Wanda and Pietro were still with their par- living with their parents, when their parents were still alive. And then we find out, of course, I had a feeling that all these shows that each episode was based on, I had a feeling, and I'm sure a lot of you, and of, of course, a lot of the other people watching had a feeling that the shows uh, that have been referenced throughout the series are shows that Wanda herself watched as a little girl. And sure enough, we find out that her dad would sell DVDs of shows from America in Sokovia. And so as he's trying to sell them, since he can't sell all of them, that's what they would do each night. They would watch like different episodes. And then her dad lets her choose and she basically says, the Dick Van Dyke show, my, my favorite show is not here. And so he knows where it is. He stashed it away for her. It's the Dick Van Dyke show. And she says, season two, episode 21. And it's the, uh, and he, the dad says, Oleg, I think. Uh, Oleg Magneto, I think. That's Magneto, right? <laughs> Definitely not a, not, a, not, a, not a Michael Fassbender. <laughs> I don't think that's Magneto. Yeah, yeah no. it's not. Uh, so... He gets the show ready. It's a DVD and he puts it on. And then he says, it's the walnut episode. And then the, the, the episode is titled, It May Look Like a Walnut. And then, of course, they're watching. Wanda's enjoying. She's got that smile on her face. And before you know it, an explosion. It's all pitch black. Wanda wakes up with Pietro. They're, it seems like they're trapped into the bed or something like that. Um, their whole little apartment is like in, in shambles. For whatever reason, the TV is still on. It's still playing the episode. And then there's a that, there's that Stark bomb that landed right in front of them that's bleeping, constantly bleeping, and it's blinking with that red light. And she's just imagining, like, when the episode ends, everything will be okay. Everything will be back to normal. And then Agatha asks her, did you stop that bomb? Like, she, uh, Wanda tries something, and then she kind of snaps out of it. And the one thing I got to say, instead of just seeing this happen, Agatha actually has her relive it. Like she's mm-hmm. actually, unlike something like, unlike, you know, we've seen a bunch of these episodes before where like, oh, I've seen the past or I'm reliving the past. And the character is usually just seeing things play out. But in this case, she is actually in there reliving it. Whatever age she was, whatever was happening, she was in it. So I thought that was like, incredible and then yeah so it uh, snaps out of it and then Agatha asked her um what happened did you stop that bomb and then uh Wanda says no I didn't and then Agatha liar. Tells her, liar. Agatha, yeah Agatha tells her you used a probability hex a low probability hex yeah, yeah. and so right then and there we find out that what we thought in Age of Ultron, or even in The Winter Soldier, when we saw that end credit sequence of Wanda Maximoff and Pietro, who were um, enabled these gifts and these powers from the uh, uh, Mind Stone. the Loki Pokey Stick, the Mind Stone. What? Um, yeah, Loki <laughs> Pokey Stick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've never heard of it. It's like basically that. what he did in Avengers One to to Bing. Hawkeye Jeremy Renner. Bing. I'm gonna poke you. You're my boy now. There you go. I'm gonna poke this guy too, Doctor Selvig or what? Yeah, you're yeah, my so boy now too. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it's crazy that it this episode has what we thought we always knew, 
is now changing everything that we thought we knew. Oh, you mean you mean subversion, Mike? Sure. Okay. <laughs> but in this case, I think it's very well done. It's well uh, done. It's well done in the fact that, um, and it's basically implying that Wanda and Pietro has basically had these abilities and these powers long before they were exposed to that infinity stone. However. However. Go ahead. Do you want to say something? Well, the, the, the scene later, after after this, right, they moved to the next scene. We, we saw how, how her powers got improved. Because the Mind Stone enhanced uh, whatever the ability was. Right. So I think, yeah, it, it definitely amplified it. Yep. Um, and then Agatha even says, um, so much trauma. So what I see here is a baby witch obsessed with sitcoms, but nothing is, at, like, it still doesn't explain how you're doing all of this in Westview. How mm -hmm. is that possible? And so we move on, and she tells, Agatha tells Wanda, the only way forward is back. And so the next door that they open is in that Hydra base. And Wanda basically walks in. Loki Pokey Stick is right there. And they're telling her, the scientists are telling her. Go touch it. Her, huh? Go touch the stick. Yeah. Touch the, <laughs> touch the sample. Touch it. Uh, touch it real good. Oh, and yeah. so what, what, what we're seeing, what Wanda's seeing is a different perspective because we, as she starts approaching the scepter, she's not even that close. And the scepter, or the, was it the stone only? or the, the Stone whole... only. It was the stone yeah. only. So the stone moves away from the scepter and floats right in front of her. And then, uh, by the way, Agatha had a great line. And she also said, don't be scared. You already lived it once. So you know what you're already facing here. So I think it's also interesting that Agatha is a villain, but at the same time, she's you're also seeing this part of Agatha where she's like encouraging Wanda, like, you know, or like she, almost like that, that hard, like that tough love teacher of like telling her like, go and keep pushing. I need mm -hmm. to find out how you're doing this. Um, I mean, I feel like she's very self-motivated. I don't know if she's even a villain at all. I think she's just, doing her thing she just wants to know how to get more power it's not like she's as of right now it doesn't seem like she's working for anybody other than herself and mm -hmm. like she's not gonna kill wanda she just wants to know she'll do whatever it takes to get to know uh, how to get the power that she got in my opinion that's what i, I that's what but, i'm getting but for what purpose uh well it seems like from the beginning the little backstory that we got of her it just seems to just be more powerful okay. selfishness uh, yeah. you know that's that's a little too uh unmarvel like though no i know it is but i'm saying it 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 gosh what's the right word to say it'd be the first time to introduce a villain who's who could swing either way for me thanos was that what are you talking about? Right. Thanos was a straight up villain. No, he villain. wasn't. Yeah, he, he, was. said, he, he said the, the universe needed balance. Yeah, and he would do whatever it takes to kill everybody. Exactly. No, not everybody. Says, it's, it's for the universe. Not everybody. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, everybody at the very end, he's like, well, now that I know you guys are going to cry about it, I'm going to kill everybody and start from nothing. Well, yeah, but that was like the, 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 the newer end. Thanos after he found out what happened. But the, the original premise of Thanos is like the universe needs balance and. You know the the resources are is finite, so we need to, you know, and have you know like remove half of the the universe or half of the population. So, or you know, the argument there was that he could have just snapped and wished for to double the resources so that there'd be enough resources for. I him. know, but Thanos isn't that you know <laughs> wasn't wasn't that forward thinking you know. Oh, dude. Yeah, you know who's a real much. villain. You know who's a real villain that we're gonna actually see? Fucking Tony Stark was the real villain in that in that whole fucking Damn. shebang, man. And yeah, I can explain that, that later. That's a hot take, but oh, it's, dead it's now. a re it's a real take. <laughs> so you know who's a real villain who a lot of people are hating on right now? That Zach we're Snyder. actually gonna see be a villain. No, Zach I'm, not, I'm talking about a character called Dark Side. Because oh, God. Dark Side Dark Side wants fucking everything. All the universe will be mine. 
All of it. Not I am. half, not 50%. All of it I am. will surrender to me. Because dark side is exactly. Period. There's, that's not that's not even that's not even there's not even any adjectives or anything behind what, what he says because dark side is because dark side is. So yep. So alrighty. But but like um there's an explanation, uh Jester, I'll tell you uh, about like her, her uh, motivations, her uh Agatha's motivations in, in the sense. In this uh, series or in the comic in, book? in the series. Not 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 in comic book sense, because in comic book sense uh, she was uh she always plays um she she was the I told you she was like a great character. So she was neither yeah. uh good nor evil, but she was always there when um when Wanda needed like uh like help, like when it comes to teaching her with uh, with the, the hex magic and everything. So So I'm getting that sense now, but what I mean with Mike's permission, can he explain? Oh, um, motivations, uh, because, you know, he, she keeps talking about uh, her husband, Ralph, mm -hmm. Ralph, this Ralph, that Ralph was never here. Ralph is not here. Mm -hmm. I wish, you know, I wish Ralph was the, you know, it was, it always was, it's always past tense. Okay. So, and the, there was an episode like when uh, the kids or the twins were talking about like, oh, mommy can bring, bring somebody back to life. Uh, and then she, she, wants she to bring him back. Yeah. Something might oh, have okay. happened. There, there, there might have been a, a Ralph in in her past hmm. that uh, you know, that could have been Mephisto or something. I don't know. <laughs> a Ralph Mephisto. Ah, oh, yeah. that, that's the thing. It seems like that Mephisto theory's kind of just been blown out the window. No, no, it, it's it's still in play. It's still in play. And yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's actually more, a lot clearer now than than before. So really, but, okay. But yeah. uh, in the sense the other people are like the the other fan theories are getting shot out of the water right now which is kind of cool i kind of i kind of like what 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 they kind of did okay like i said like the the sub the subversions that they did with this uh, episode really really like screwed some some people's uh theories and on how oh haywood is like you know haywood is like uh a can uh a crawl or a cree uh you know a cree master or whatever whatever no he's okay. just a fucking guy from from sword who who wanted technology? So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he seems to have some ulterior motives too. Yeah, time. but but yeah, like, I I think I I really think like you know, for Agatha to 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 ask for more power, there's a there's a valid reason for that. Whether it's for for love, whether it be for for greed, for more power, or for anything, but you know, knowing knowing what what MCU. Uh, mindsets are. It's always about something about somebody. Okay. All right. They want to. They want to bring somebody back. So. All yep. Right. So we're back in the Hydra base, and then the Infinity Stone floats right in front of her, and mm -hmm. then the Mind Stone basically reveals, shows her a vision, shows Wanda a vision mm -hmm. of her future self as the Scarlet Witch, yep. full blown Scarlet Witch. In it's a really quick shot, but the the, the already... silhouette looks nice, right? Yeah, the silhouette and... of the, the the crown kind of sort right. of looks nice. Okay, some so people we're... got a screenshot of it. She's got the belt on. She's got all these things on. Like it's it's it looks awesome, and I think it's something we're gonna see be seeing in the future. Uh, Jester, you had something? Yeah. So I just wanted to ask you. So like, I didn't realize that there was because like so what I know, and I'm just gonna use this as a comparison. But the Phoenix is not um, Jean Grey. The Phoenix joins with Jean Grey. And I'm asking, is it is it the same scenario with the Scarlet Witch mm -mm. and Wanda? Mm -mm. No. What is it? Um, the Okay. The Phoenix Force is basically a universal uh, en entity or energy. So it's all over. The, it's all over. It's all over Marvel, the Marvel Universe. Okay. It always it always handpicks somebody. To, to to be considered a host so that they can uh, you know whatever need do what needs to be done to destroy a planet so that the universe will be balanced et cetera et cetera, et cetera whatever it, need, it needs to do okay. um, Jean Grey is the perfect candidate just because she's capable um, mentally and telepathically uh, or with, with her telepathy she's um, she she is a mat, like a like a hundred percent match to what the Phoenix wants okay. in, in, in as a host. 
So she's always the likely candidate for every, everything. Uh, in the comic books, the Phoenix Force goes to other people too uh, to to be hosted, but it, it doesn't turn out uh, as good as what the what uh, what it was with uh, with Jean Grey. Okay. Um, Scarlet Witch is Scarlet Witch. Um, again, like I like I explained uh, earlier, we were talking about it earlier. She already has latent uh, hex magic powers. Like you know, that's that's basically her her reality warping uh, abilities are is in in magic. You know, the, the little magic stuff that that she does. Okay. That that's her mutant ability. She she the ability to create hex magic, the ability to do to do all of these things. Um, okay. It got um, amplified by the mind gem, or the mind stone. Okay. So the vision that she sees is her true potential of becoming that Scarlet Witch, which uh, Agatha, oh, I see. Okay. which Agatha is, you know, legend said that like you know, the, you guys are, you know, it's impossible for you to have, to be one because you're low, low level, whatever, whatever you. Oh, do anything. I see. That makes a lot um, of sense. Agatha, and, and I guess spoilers for what uh, for what uh, it's gonna happen. Agatha wants to be the Scarlet Witch so that she can raise whoever she wants to raise up. Oh, Ooh. so interesting. So, but that's basically what uh, what what she wants. Because she she always wants to know what where did you get your power? How did you get your power? Why did you get this power? Why did you get this? You, who you know, mm. you don't deserve this. It was it's always it's always something with like Agatha. She she doesn't understand. So that's why she slow she slow slowly. That's how she manipulated. Uh, the hex that she uh, she's on because like it was supposed to be just the fifties. Ah, uh, okay. And you know she she manipulated every single episode or every every single thing to to push um to push Wanda to 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 get away from that that mindset of, of the fifties mental mentality to to be removed from that reality so that they she can she can find out what you know, how how she got the the real powers. Okay. So her her true purpose was was Wanda all all along. It wasn't it wasn't you know. Hmm. It wasn't the the other things. So. Interesting. Yeah. You have the power to save the one I love. Sounds mm. familiar from a film called Revenge of the Fucking Sith. Mm. Holy <laughs> you shit. must choose. Someone's been watching Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Some. It's no oh. it's no surprise though. Kevin Feige is a big fan. Is he really? Yeah, he is. That's why he's working on a Star Wars show. And you're going to be seeing your favorite Captain Marvel become a Jedi before you know it. Is that, is that real? Don't say that. Don't break well, my heart like that. She has expressed that she's a huge Star Wars fan. That's she cool. She Jedi robes at... Hey, Galaxy Jester Day. is also a huge Star Wars fan, but that doesn't mean it's right. But, but Jester's not buddies <laughs> with Kevin Feige now, is he? Yeah, but they, they always... You know, they're, they're both lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't mean that they're buddies. They, they had they had the same lesbian haircut. That's <laughs> hey, you know what they say in Hollywood? It's all about yeah. who you know. Mm. Captain Karen made a billion dollars. Yeah, so I guess so. You I guess. Or not, probably won't make that again. If I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna uh, be a matter of if, time. If, if, if it's uh, if it's Photon versus Captain Marvel, I might have to watch that. Oh somewhere. yeah, same. Oh, you I, know I you know, I want I want to see Photon kick the shit out of Captain Marvel. Oh yeah, the same. But yeah. you know, it, it might just be on uh, Disney Plus though. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna buy it like on like watch it on 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 the movie screen. So uh, like, yeah, how lame. So that what? means we're gonna review it, and then you won't have anything to say about it, right, bro. <laughs> oh man, uh, Catherine Han. I gotta say, she's been quite the standout in this show. Yeah. Uh, I have not liked anything that she's been in. You didn't uh, like her in Step Brothers? I take that back. I don't <laughs> like her performances in anything that she's in that I have seen personally. But in this one, she's like she's on par with um, Olsen to me. Yeah. With her, like her acting is really really good in this. And man, she's she's playing a great character. I am really impressed. As as soon as I found out that she she was gonna play Agnes, because I, I kind of figured out that Agatha or Agnes was Agatha Harkness like when they introduced the One Division stuff, right? Okay. When I found out that she was gonna play the witch, and I was like, yeah, it's a good cast. Yeah. She she she's good. Like I, again, like comedians in a dramatic role, they 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 always they you know more than um, surprise people in a sense. Now, Robin Williams, of course. Uh, 
uh, Jim well, Carrey and all that stuff. Right? Their humor so, comes from really rough places. That's why they're so yeah. good at it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Catherine Hahn might might be suffering the same thing, man. Comedians yeah. are, you know. Oh, yeah. Tormented inside yeah. most of the time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so uh, back to the Hydra base. What we see is uh, Wanda sees this like brilliant vision of her future self and of her future potential. But then when they play back the footage, the scientists only see her walking and then it cuts and she's knocked down on the floor. That's it. And then it fast forwards to like she's in, the, in, a, in another cell and she's watching an episode of what looks like um, the Brady Bunch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then um, we forward to uh, the Avengers base and then she's sitting, this was after, or it could be before Civil War. Yeah, I think it's before Civil War, um, right before the events of Civil War, after Age of Ultron. Um, she's very, of course, uh, grief stricken with the loss of her brother uh, Pietro. And then she's watching an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. Mm -hmm. And then Vision steps in, sits with her. He's trying to understand the humor of the show. Um, and then she's trying to explain it to him, but of course he's still not understanding. And then she explains to him that it, uh, she's tired. She's basically tired. She lost her parents. She lost her brother. And um, it feels like a wave. Like when she stands up, it like the, the sorrow like hits her again. The grief hits her. And she has to like try to get back up again. And then Vision says something really great. And he tells her like, it can't all be sorrow. And he even explains like, he's, not re he's never really known grief because he's never really lost anyone. He's always been alone. But he tells her, but what is grief if not love? persevering which a lot of people are like latching on to you know um so and then a few moments later something funny happens in the show they both laugh and then now like you know he's he's understanding the humor uh and, and what, what's happening and some really powerful and really deep stuff here like you know we may not all be superheroes we may not all have chaos magic but we all in a sense, have experienced grief, loss, yeah. and a lot of the things that she has been experiencing. So it's, I think it, the show really has uh, obviously a huge platform. I mean, yes, it's entertainment, but it's, it runs deep. And it's really like proving, like, you know, everyone will take something differently out of this. Uh, yeah, and and Pinhead, Pinhead nailed it in the head like a few episodes back like, when he was ta talking about the the mental uh, stress that's, that's happening within uh, within uh, Wanda, like it's it's breaking down and it's like you know it's just destroying her and she doesn't know how to how to deal with it like personally, right? So so like I feel like when 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 I was watching this, it was just like more like uh, more more like uh, Agatha's trying to help her go through the grief as well. You know, it's not it's not just. It's not just finding out like how she got her powers. It's more like you know giving her the platform to to express that grief in that sense. Right, right. And so. then uh, Agatha asks her, "Tell me how you did it, Wanda." And then we move forward now um, into the Sword Headquarters. Mm -hmm. Now to the events leading up to like maybe what a week. Of, it's, it seems like this this is taking place in a week. Maybe yeah, like a, it was like a week or a week and a half. Yeah, so this is now um, the the mo the the events right before this all happened. Um, so Wanda is in Sword Headquarters. She wants to see Vision's body. She wants to bury him. That's all she wants because she doesn't have anyone. She wants to bury him, and they're not letting her in. And then uh, the uh, security, all the all the guys at Sword Headquarters are dicks, <laughs> pretty much. So. Um, you don't have a pass. You don't yeah, have an ID. You shall not pass. Um, like, bitch, bitch, I'm I, I'm Wanda Maximoff. Yeah, you, bitch, you, you know want who me to? I am? You want to turn into silly putty? Yeah. <laughs> so he gets a call uh, from someone, and then he lets her through. He tells her like, "Oh, go to your right or left." 
she opens the doors with her magic. Everyone's like, oh, what's going on? What's she doing here? And then she starts making her way. She opens the door into an office and it's director Tyler Hayward. And he's explaining to her that um, he let her in to say goodbye to the vision. So he looks out her office in the glass and on the bottom right there is all the scientists um, working on dismantling uh, the vision's, vision's body, which you can see it's all in pieces. Uh, his head separated from his torso and his appendages, everything is. And he explains to her, um, we're dismantling a $3 billion. Um, he's the most powerful weapon on earth and we need to dismantle him. And I just, I can't give you um, $3 billion worth of technology just to bury into the ground because it's, da it's dangerous. According to him, it's dangerous and we just can't give it to you because you can bring, uh, you can bring a life back online. And then he corrects himself and he says, I mean, bring back someone to life, something like that. And so she gets really pissed off. She shatters the glass of his window and someone took a screenshot of it. When she shatters that glass and her magic hits the glass, it's the, the, when the glass shatters, it's actually the shape of a heart. That's her Aww. heart. That's her Aww. heart and it's shattered fucking shattered bro but yeah um there's a screenshot of it uh and then she goes down she floats down and then everyone's like draws guns to her the there's uh sword agents right there totally unsterile or whatever but their their guns are drawn they're ready to shoot at her and tyler hayward goes down and tells her it's okay let her let her say goodbye so she goes to vision's head and she tries to like she uses some magic tries to feel him and she tells him uh, I can't feel you, which is That's a direct, which is a direct callback to um, that moment in Infinity War uh, when he tell when she's basically destroying the Mind Stone on Vision, and he tells her, "I can only feel you." And then I guess even before that's that, what she said, right? But now she can't feel him, and that's why she had to make her own vibrator. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I mean, oh, hold on, hold on. So. Um, when well, in, the, in, in, in last week's episode, when Agne, Agatha took the kids away and she, Wanda was left alone, she had her bowl of cereal, she got the remote, and for a second she smiled. And someone took a screenshot of that <laughs> and put basically put this girl will get excited with anything with like batteries in it. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. and I just no. thought. But I, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's just a joke. Okay? She takes Vision's finger and's like, "I'll use this later." Oh God! So, but hey, he can he can phase anything. Mm, so yeah. you know, uh, he can he can he can adjust the size to whatever her like <laughs> is. So, Naughty um, boy. So yeah, um, she says I can't. Uh, I totally ruined the moment. So <laughs> she um she basically says yeah, uh, I can't feel you, man. If uh, there's Emmy Awards this year, and I'm hoping there is. You got to give it to Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, holy yeah. Shit. Holy shit. She is doing everything in this show. We've seen a range of emotions uh, for this, for her, for, for, the, uh, for her character in this show um, that we've possibly, we've, we've seen glimpses of in the films, but nothing like this. Um, so she basically says goodbye to Vision. She leaves. And this is a 180 or a three, uh, yeah, 180 from what we thought we were shown in those, uh, in the surveillance footage. We thought this whole time that she stole his body. She broke into SWORD uh, headquarters and stole Vision's body and basically like reforged him with her magic. But no, she left his body there. She gets into a car. There's a, uh, there's a slip, uh, there's like a, an envelope beside her on the front seat. She drives away. She drives to New Jersey arrives in Westview, drives past the town. We see the cast members that we've seen before, Visions, uh, the, the wife of Vision's boss, some of the neighbors that we've seen before in past episodes. And then she drives up and this, the town looks really uh, like- Fucked really, up. Yeah, basically. Like it's old, not, it's not very clean. There's stuff, there's weeds growing out everywhere. It hasn't been well. It, it's, it is New Jersey, Mike. So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You got it. laughs> really? Oh, man. I'm I, think just... 
I'd be excited to go to um, Red Bank, New Jersey, where uh, the secret stash is of Kevin. So looks nice over there. But yeah, mm. um, so she drives up to this neighborhood, and then she drives up to this um, by this house. There's, there's this plot of land where there's a foundation for a, for what a house where a house could uh, could be built. She opens the envelope, and on that paper is a uh, is a deed or a title to uh, the land to the to, to a home or the land potentially um and it says there there's a handwritten note on it and it says to grow old in v obviously from vision and that's when she just breaks down the grief and the pain she feels everything and right then and there from that like uh moment she explodes her her power her chaos magic explodes and it transforms everything into 50s Westview. And lo and behold, a yellow form of a figure starts reemerging along with a house, along with a town that's been transformed. And she, it ends up that she created vision from her chaos magic, mm -hmm. which is like, holy shit. Like, wow, that was, uh, that was pretty amazing. And then um, right at that moment, like when she just breaks down, I said, give her a fucking Emmy right now. Give it <laughs> yeah, no okay. kidding. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then it basically like, um, once that happens, vision is in black and white. She's, uh, she's still in color. And then once she steps into, into the frame, she's now basically transformed herself into, with the hairstyle of the 50s, into that first episode that we see. Mm -hmm. And then vision looks at her. And then they kiss and then they, they sit down on the couch and then he has a remote, he turns on the TV and that's it. And then we flip to um, back to the current uh, time. Wanda like wakes up. It's like behind the stage, uh, behind the stage of, um, of a set of a TV show. She hears the twins calling out to her. She runs outside and Agatha now has both twins. She's floating. She's holding the twins with some sort of magic. They, uh, she can't let them go. She's not letting them go. And she tells Wanda, you have no idea how dangerous you are. You're supposed to be a myth, a being capable of spontaneous creation. And here you are using it to make breakfast for dinner. This is chaos magic, Wanda. And that makes you the Scarlet Witch. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. This time, no, please stand by. It just goes to that blank screen. No, please stand by. Which is some would argue the real villain of WandaVision because everyone gets pissed off when they see that. Yeah. And then of course we go through the credits, but lo and behold, before you know it, we have another mid-credit scene. And it is director Tyler Hayward with his sword crew. They have the drone still glowing with Wanda's chaos magic. And they pretty much take a little bit of that magic, extract it, and put it into this pod. And then lo and behold we have the vision that was disassembled, supposedly, is now reassembled, and this vision is basically white liquid eraser paper vision, which has been reanimated and speculated that, um, as Pinhead has brought up, James Spader is in the cast. Everyone is now speculating that James Spader, AKA Ultron, will be the voice of this white vision. But yeah. we'll find out uh, next week. So that's the episode. Another amazing episode. Question and uh, op Operation uh, Cataract, right? Yes. But what happens to the eye when uh, when cataract happened? Um, white. The, the eyes turn white, right? Ooh. Uh, privileged vision. That's so awesome. Hey man, I can't I can't believe they they did it, but they did it, which which is kind of cool. Uh, it, it's again the, they're they're pulling off of the the majority of the um you know the storylines from one division from all the comic books that Wanda and Vision were a part of. So this was a part of it too. So okay, yeah, it's not it's not bad. So explain to me what white vision is. In the comic books, um, something happened to Vision, and he got he got kidnapped by a Shield, and he got dismantled, and something happened to him. So the Avengers went after him, 
Hank Pym uh, told uh, everybody that um, we we can rebuild um, we can rebuild the vision, but all of the memories, all of the emotions, all of the things that he has is gone because it, it got erased from the Avengers computers and mainframe and all that stuff. Okay. So when they rebuilt them, uh, Wanda came over. Oh, honey, Vish, you know, whatever. G- gave him a kiss, and he just stood there. And he was just, he has no recollection of uh, their marriage or anything like that. Hmm. So that's uh, that's that's uh, White Vision in um, in the comic books. Okay. So this might be again. This this is the weapon of choice that uh, uh, Sword is saying that this is going to be their sentient weapon to to prevent. Um, you know, other powerful beings from from uh, ruling or destroying the world and all that stuff. So this this <laughs> is their um, this is their plan, and uh, a lot of theories are saying that uh, Sword was supposed to make Sentinels, <laughs> but they they just got they just just got uh, their rugs uh, pulled under from them. The, all those people are saying that. So yeah, like White Vision is gonna be cool, man. And just, it's good to see like uh, White Vision versus a uh, 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 Magic Vision uh, go toe to toe in the hex. And you know, hopefully they do the little mind melt thing, and uh, Paul Bettany turns into White Vision. I think White the White Vision costume looks nice, to be honest. Oh, so you, so you're saying that you think that. Wanda's vision is going to put his consciousness into the embodiment of the white vision in the end. Possibly, I don't know. Huh? That's that cool. that could that could be uh, that could be at the Doctor Strange uh, movie or anything like that because they they have to end with a cliffhanger or something sad about this one, right? Like that's yeah. what they said. Um, what's the stone in his head then in this new one? It, um, in the comic books, it's a solar gem that he oh, absorbs uh, sunlight. Yeah, but I'm talking about in the show. Um, Blue. It, it, well, it's kind of whitish. It Is could it? be they. It possibly be a small version of the arc reactor that uh, Tony Stark invented. Uh, okay. It looked like it, but but yeah, I don't did. think I, I don't think it is. I think it's just like a gem that uh, absorbs uh, solar radiation or solar energy, so that he can he can be powered. Hmm. It's okay. just like a gem, you know. It's like a thing. Yeah. Yep. So hmm. I don't know. And yes, um, she is a mega level. So. <laughs> Speaking of that. which, uh, Pinhead, you've been quiet. What are your thoughts? I don't have any thoughts on it. Uh, my big thoughts about it is, uh, if that is the case, Kuya, you know why they didn't do it? They didn't want the cracker honky white man to be forefront during Black History Month so they skip to the next week. You know, <laughs> no, that, that's a uh, white that's vision. What, you know, white vision. I, I did see a tweet uh, you know, a tweet on, on that. Like some somebody was like saying, Oh great. Like, you know, we, we have a white vision on uh, during Black History Month. Neat. Honestly I, I was like I, come on. I thought I thought it was funny. I had to I had to press the like button on that one. Was if it's like, a joke, yeah, it's funny. But I mean, oh, he he was a he was an activist. But like I guess apparently he watched the he watched the WandaVision episode with where the privileged the vision showed up miraculously. <laughs> privileged so. vision. Oh my god! That would be my full privilege. Hey, three billion dollars worth of stuff. Three billion dollars. Well, easy. I wish I was that privileged. Tony Stark himself. I mean, you know. Hey, I'm just saying three three billion dollars worth of you know whatever, and the the painting that you can got uh, you could have gotten was like oh it could have been like a little, uh you know dark or whatever just to match the the, the sword jackets and stuff, but no it had to be white. So go figure. So, I, I mean, mean he's that way were, in the comic books. They were yeah seen. in the comic books. It was like in the comic books. It was like a uh, uh, off white color. I, I I I don't know if you remember like the Avengers video games back in the nineties. Vaguely, uh, I, I didn't really play them because because the the vision out. in the in the video games was was the the privileged vision. So okay, oh okay, uh, yeah okay. So so they're saying that by the time, uh, so when in the events of Infinity War. 
after everyone disappeared, half the universe disappeared from mm -hmm. the almighty snap blip yeah. of Thanos, you would have thought that the Avengers took the body of Vision. But now people are saying like, so they just left him there? Or did they take his body and then they gave it to Sword? Well, I mean, it, it is in Wakanda territory. And since it, it, it is a vibranium, uh, it's kind of like Wakandan property, right? Right. You would have thought that they could have just, oh, we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll then, dismantle it. No, no, no. And then Wakanda would be like, uh, no, bitch. This is, Wakanda, this is Wakandan property because that's vibranium. Well, that's right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> But, but so inconsistency right there, what happened? But I, I don't know. I mean, the, th this, this, said, is, this is this is the the thing about the, that bugs me about uh, Marvel stuff. They they have a lot of plot holes that that happen, and apparently nobody gives a shit, except for people that that are inquisitive and they want to know. They was like, yeah. well, well, I'm just saying. I mean, good question. But it's still like kind of iffy. I'm just saying that Wanda said that when she went to go back to get his body after everything that happened, he was gone. Yeah, because well, like, so she, 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 she 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 dusted. She got yeah. dusted. She got dusted in the blitz. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Oh, ah, right. Uh, yeah. she got dusted. Oh, that's stupid, man. Really? Yeah. So when that's she went back, when she went back uh, five years later, oh, I don't know Where what you mean. We gave it. We gave it to you guys, to the Avengers. Well, you know what? She should have gone after the Avengers. Like, where the fuck is Vision, guys? Like, what are or, you talking about? No one even bothered to check on Wanda. Hey, how are you doing? No, how are you that... doing over there? You need some therapy. Hawkeye, Hawkeye did, therapy but, but then like Hawkeye, Hawkeye was like, eh, I'm, I'm going through my own shit." So, yeah, someone made a, a compile. Uh, someone basically made a, a compilation of after the events of Endgame. Steve got to go back with Peggy and Boinker. <laughs> um, Tony, of course, sacrificed, you know. Okay. Um, who else had a happy ending? Hawkeye got to go back. Um, Family's back, they, yeah. They didn't show Bruce Banner, though, because he lost Black Widow. Oh, by the way, on Civil War, on Team Iron Man, there was, uh, people every now and then. I, yeah, everybody, everybody got dusted except who, for who was, Yeah, who was right? Who is right in Team Iron? Is it Team Cap or Team Iron Man? When you look at the 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 status of Team Iron Man, where are all they now? Iron Man is gone. Uh, War Machine still there. No, but but he's a paraplegic. So. <laughs> oh my! God. Well, I mean, yeah, he's, got he's, his, he's got his cybernetic stuff. Yeah, but um, he's a paraplegic, so he's like you know he, he's half a man now. So <laughs> oh, wow. oh my God, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> you've got Wanda. Who, oh, no, no, no. Wanda is a team cap. Sorry. Um, who else was the team Iron Man? Oh, Peter Parker, which I guess he's okay because he's got to be for the next movie. He's <laughs> he's he's uh, the son of of uh, Iron Man. Uh, I guess. Um, but yeah, and then you look at team cap. So Bucky's still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Falcon, Falcon is so. still alive. Cap is very much well alive and boinking. Uh, Peggy at eighty years old. <laughs> at eighty years old. So okay, um, no nobody fucking bats an eye that he went back in in time to to you know to dance with Peggy and do whatever. And I did, Peg, and then Peggy was married. I thought it was a lot of inconsistencies because like yeah, she met somebody after uh, Steve you know went into the ice and became a popsicle, and then so that poor bastard now is just alone. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. I was like, so there's the theory that they said that there's an old man in civil, yeah, in civil war when when when, when Peggy died, the, the when he finds the out Peggy. that she died. There's an old man with white hair that's helping carry Peggy's casket. No, and that was that was President Joe casket. Biden, Mike. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure, because he'd be able to lift that casket. Good yeah. one. Hey. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's and that's the thing. Like, there's some inconsistencies, but Marvel is perfect. It's no, perfect. it's not. And it's I'm sorry, perfect. that theory is so like it's stretching. It's trying so hard to make it perfect. It's like no, that's yeah. no. Man, like because... when they, like when they said that kid with the uh, Iron Man helmet on is like, oh, that kid Spider Man. So and so confirmed it. It's like that's so that's lazy. That's lazy. Everything is connected. Oh gosh. 
and and it rightfully is, but that's the thing now. Like, as grand and as big as everything is, there's still some inconsistencies here and there. But you know, people will gloss over it because well, it's Marvel. I get glossing over it. That that's healthy. It's healthy to do that. But like you know, they they fix some things here and there. Like for example, in this episode when she's like, "Oh, that accent, you know, comes and goes whenever it wants." You know, we talked about that. Like they kind of address the issue that she never she uses her accent whenever she wants and it's like what but with other things there's i've noticed they're starting to like add things here and there but to say that it's it's flawless and it and it doesn't have any inconsistencies or plot holes is, is kind of goofy i mean the the idea of time travel in general opens up a lot of possibilities for plot holes unless uh, a tar a tardis uh, De a DeLorean or a Speed Force is involved. Time travel is lazy um, script writing. Just saying. A TARDIS. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. TARDIS. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I, I would, I don't know if I want to go lazy writing. I'm just saying that it has to be. It, it's a cop right. out. It, it, it's a fucking cop out for anything. It's just like, oh, like, like you know, our 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 superheroes will just go back in time and and, and grab all the other stuff while while the other things are destroyed. Did that oh, happen? Yeah, com I don't remember that happening in the comics. No, because no, when no. I read when I read the Infinity Gauntlet comic no. book, I was like, and I was watching everybody. Everybody died in the Infinity. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know, and that's what I'm saying. Like when I when I was watching, it Indian wasn't comic, half. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember no, uh, I don't remember no time travel in the. Comic it book. was Adam Warlock that saved them. Yeah, and, that's right. And, and like he was in the Soul know. Stone, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he, his benevolence, he, his innocence in the sense that you know, well, I want it back, or right. I want it, whatever, and restored everybody. Yep. And then he, you know, and and in his kindness, he gave it to Spider Man because he he sensed that Spider Man was the most honorable. Out of all the heroes, he gave him right. the, the Infinity Gauntlet. I remember. Yep. Spider Man used it to punch the shit out of Thanos. Yep. But that's uh, about it. Time travel instead, bro. No, yeah, yeah. because you're like you know, you know, have, having somebody else other than Thanos holding the Infinity Stones, you know, is is a ridiculous idea. <laughs> I totally thought they were gonna bring in Adam Warlock too, man, because the. Um, Guardians. Uh, Guardians, yeah, yeah, man. I'm like, where is he I, at? He's still yeah. he's still sleeping in his cocoon. <sighs> yeah, I mean that's cool, but he would have been great. He should they should have brought him in the the Infinity. No, War. they're they're gonna give him like he, he's he's gonna be the 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 plot device and all that shit for Guardians three with or and or Thor, uh, Love and uh, Love and Hammer, or whatever Love and Lightning, whatever, whatever that whatever Love the, and the from is. Down Under. Yeah. <laughs> Because, so, um, because, like, again, you know, when when Adam Warlock comes in, he's gonna be the the, the straight man, while the other guys are gonna like, you know, cap cap all the jokes on him. Oh, why are you so golden, bro? You're so golden, I got, bro. I got a big dick, right? Huh? Yeah. You, yeah. You know, my muscles are big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dog is golden too, buddy. It's tiny. <laughs> Golden uh, eighteen-inch Kong killing it. So I, I'm know. curious. So I was surprised to find out earlier this week that Pinhead has actually not seen Avengers: Age of Ultron, and oh. so to me it made sense that he watch it before the the final episode next week, because there's of course there's a lot of setup right there. Is when we really first meet uh, Wanda and Max uh, and um, Pietro. And then, of course, Ultron, uh, who, as Pinhead has mentioned, James Spader is in the cast of this uh, of One Division. So I'm curious uh, to uh, to hear your thoughts on Age of Ultron, Pinhead. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was kind of dog shit, to be quite honest. I mean, uh, there was a lot of great scenes in it. There was a a lot of great action scenes. There was a good time there, but every time you like got to the point where there was a good action scene and there was like story to be told, they pull back and we go into something that nobody gives a fuck about. Like there's a lot of stuff in this movie that absolutely sucks. And 
it's just garbage to me. The only thing that I could say that really saves this movie is uh, James Spader, and that's mm. what I'm looking forward to if this is what's going to happen next week. That's all I'm looking forward to because Age of Ultron was fucking dog shit. So I'm curious now because in Age of Ultron, there's that scene after the party that they had in Avengers Tower where they're all trying to have fun and they try to lift Mjolnir from yeah. the table. Mm -hmm. And you see clearly that, and now knowing that you haven't seen Age of Ultron and then you watch Endgame and then you see Cap wield Mjolnir, how did you react to that? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I, I like that. Looking at seeing how they did that, like I looked at that because full disclosure, someone already showed that scene to me before, before oh. I even seen Age of Ultron. They're like, you know, I get I get shit spoiled for me all the time, which pisses me off. But with that being said, looking at that scene, you it, it's a precursor. You can see that it was gonna happen. Okay. It was Okay, so now I know that you saw that scene before you saw Endgame. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I, because I just thought this whole time, like, man, you never saw that scene. So it must have been a different reaction from you when you saw in Endgame Cap start wielding Mjolnir. Because no, if you did I, 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 I knew, that, I knew, uh, like, like I said, I knew about that scene. Okay, I, like, okay. I saw, I saw that scene, but. So I understood. So I did understand that scene. Okay. I, I had okay. seen that scene. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause immediately when that happened in Endgame, immediately everyone remembers that scene in age of Ultron, which was a setup and it actually paid off in Endgame, where cap, like it, it almost looks like he moved it and yeah. or got even worried there. He was like, what the fuck? Like, did, did it just move? Yeah. He was like, Oh shit. There, there's right. two, there's two, um, uh, schools of thought in that one, in that scene, the the first the first one is that uh, Cap knew that he he was able to lift it, but mm -hmm. he just pretended to fake lift it, just just because like you know, oh, I I'm you know I I you know gee golly wish, you know like oh by golly, uh you know Thor is gonna get butt hurt if I lift his hammer in front of him, right? That was one. The second one, which I thought was kind of cooler. Is the fact that uh, because Cap didn't tell uh, Tony that he knew that Bucky was involved in killing his parents, that he was still unworthy of of, of lifting up uh, Mjolnir. That one, that one actually, especially now that I've actually watched Civil War recently, like last weekend, that one makes far more sense in right? the, in, in the MCU continuity yeah. where we're at right now. That one makes far more sense because Mjolnir's not going to fucking do that shit like like you can do that uh, Mjolnir's not going to do that shit it's going to be like oh and he's going to it's going to go off the ground like you can't fool like judge I'm not the expert on this yeah. but judging from what I know in this continuity it's not going to work that way so I would much rather think that it was because of the Bucky scenario which leads into Falcon and Winter Soldier and 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 uh, implications into that. So, yeah, which we is coming have. very soon, by the way. So, cl clarify that again. You said um, Cap didn't know that Bucky killed. No, no, like Cap knew uh -huh. that, that 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 he killed because in Civil War, right? He, like you know, he was he was trying to tell Tony, uh, you know, like I was going to tell you. But I didn't know the right, you know, I didn't know but at then, the right time. But then when did Cap find out that information? He was part of Shield. He knew he knew everything, bro. Uh, <laughs> so because I, I thought Cap just found out in the events of Civil no, War. No, he didn't. He knew all along. He knew he knew all along. Yeah. Okay. So after um, because we just watched Winter Soldier. After Winter Soldier, he finds out. Uh, at the very end, he 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 gets the file on Bucky. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
uh, from Natasha. Like, yeah, and then like all all of the all of the, all of the confirmed kills and all that stuff. Yep. Well, one there's them, also that says, moment uh, in Stark Civil Stark. War. If you really pay attention, he asked him, "Did you know?" And he's like, "Yeah." And that's why that's when he starts to fuck him up because right, he's right. like, "You know, right, you right." Knew. Like that, that I remember. You knew. Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to um, piece it in the timeline. Yeah, he, you know, he's my friend Tony. You know, I, I, I thought so I was too. So ah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I remember that stuff, but I'm trying to. As far because Age of Ultron is 2015, yep. Civil War is after 2016. So, yeah, I'm trying to piece. Yeah, okay. So if he found out in Winter Soldier, then that adds up. Yeah. And can I put something out here? Yeah. Can Ultron alt like alter timelines and reality? No. Okay. Says, uh, did we did we so for the audience and I'm not and I'm not asking this out of ignorance did for the audience did we get a clear concise reason why we got to switch between Aaron Taylor Johnson and Evan Peters as Quicksilver um it was confirmed by Agatha Harkness he just she just pulled somebody that's uh, similar to uh Pietro but like he could she couldn't pull the body or she couldn't do necromancy which is like take over a body because one, he's uh, in a different country, and two, uh, he has bullet holes in him. So she would have had to got that through an alternate timeline, correct? He he just used somebody somebody's face that that's in you know in a whatever. Yeah, it, it could be a different dimension. It could be so somebody. it could be a different dimension. Yeah. Well, on that note, you know, Wanda and her brother fucked each other. So just letting you know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, there there is a. There is a comic book about that, yeah. So and uh, Star Wars, they made out too. So yeah, well, Sera Sera, well so. no, no, they had, not knowing your siblings is different. From no, no, no. Kids. They actually, they actually fucked because you know in Godzilla they have they fucked and they had the child, and then later on, oh the yeah, following yeah. year, oh yeah, they, they become did. brother and sister. So in an alternate timeline, they fuck. <laughs> Just to let oh, you know, yeah. oh, in, in the Godzilla verse, okay, in the monster verse, gotcha. It's in all the it might as well be in all the same universe. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yep. So any other thoughts regarding WandaVision episode eight? Uh, I'm, I'm so kinda... this is the penultimate episode, right? This is the this is the second to last episode, right? Yep. That's what that's what they okay. said. Yep. Just making sure because I I'm ready to see this uh, ship sell sell, you know. I'm just happy that like some of the the fan, fan theories that like all of these uh, MCU nerds are trying to post online is getting shot to shit. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that's like oh, if this is from the machine, oh, you know. And then next thing you know, Haywood is like you know just a regular dude, part of Sword. He's an asshole, but he's a part. He's just part of Sword. So that's funny. Yep. Alrighty then. Well, that about does it for this episode review of WandaVision. We've got one more to go next week. So in the meantime, you can follow us on Instagram at FMANDTB. On Facebook, just search Filmmaker Mike and the Boys. And then on Twitter, you can follow us at FMANDB TB Podcast. Jester. Yeah, baby. Oh, uh, <laughs> you guys Someone's can follow me anywhere. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm paying attention. Yeah. You guys can follow me everywhere you want to follow me. No, don't do that. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Sequester Jester. Look for me. I'll be there. Kuya? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just pretending to be Jester. <laughs> Um, You're doing a terrible job at it. Oh well, yeah, because I'm cuter. Anyways, um, old man Jimmy at uh, Instagram. There's still nothing in there, just because like you know I'm subverting uh, uh, our, you know our fans. <laughs> Why? I'm telling them to I'm telling them to be prepared for something, but like I'm like, eh, fucking, I got other shit to do. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
No, nah, but uh, oh, um, my my wife bought uh one of those uh circle uh camera lights. lamp. Yeah, those lights. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I guess she. I guess she's uh she's ser- she's serious about this uh, YouTube thingy. So. Oh, TikTok. You guys gonna do TikToks? I don't think so. But get your butt over to TikTok, dude. Come on. It would be hilarious though, because I I would I would I would do be a viral you. hit. Man. We'll we'll stitch with each other too, and I'll make fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Uh, Pinhead, go ahead. I'm on the same, you know. I'm officially on YouTube now. So if you check Yay! that out, Pinhead one nine eight and Pinhead one nine eight on Instagram, that's all you need to follow. That's it. Yay! Oh yeah, baby. All righty. Sugoi. Can't wait to watch him with my pants off. Sugoi. Wow. Oh, okay. Did I say that out loud? My bad. TMI. <laughs> TMI. Alrighty. So that's it for this episode. We've got one more episode and then a behind the scenes, which we'll probably discuss on our regular show. Doctor uh, Strange. Next episode, guys. Can't wait. Yeah, Doctor Can't Strange. Can't wait for Spider Man to show up also. Can't wait for fucking Falcon and the Winter Sh- Soldier Soldier to come also up. show up. And then Thanos. Yeah. And Thanos to come up with a snap. The tall man's coming. And then Tony Stark's gonna show up too. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be like a big big old Avengers uh fucking uh extravaganza family reunion, you know. And oh. then oh, and um the real MCU Quicksilver is gonna come back to life. That's what I was gonna say, Pietro. Without, without the without the bullets, and then he's gonna say, "Sorry, I'm late because I got bullets in me." Without the bullets, but with all wow. the holes. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I got shut up in traffic. Sorry, it is <laughs> New Jersey. That, you didn't see that coming. <laughs> it, it, it is New Jersey, so I got shut up pretty bad. <laughs> you definitely didn't see it coming. Uh, that's what she said. <laughs> oh! Oh boy! Oh boy! Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! All righty. Well, thank you guys for listening. Or watching, whichever, however you like to. Um, did, did people react on uh, Facebook or not? Um, no. Okay. No, good. because nobody loves us. That's why. That's yeah, why. I just disconnected because there wasn't there wasn't much activity for whatever gotcha. strange reason. Or maybe it's later than usual that we're doing it, or who knows? I think or, they're used to they're used to our Sunday fucking. <laughs> well, no Saturday night. I mean. No, the, but the, but the, they, since, since we changed it to Sunday, everybody was like, oh, like, what the fuck are they doing on Saturday? That's bullshit. Stay fucking consistent. That's all there is to it. Hey, we're <laughs> right. here on the weekends. That's well, all, hey, that's all you know what? You know what? For our listeners or our watchers, we're about to give you so much content. Like, so much content. So that's yeah, what we're yeah. doing it's right March now. March Madness without the, the fucking basketball. are opening now. Yeah, March it's Madness up. without the basketball. So... Can't wait. Oh. Chaos madness. Oh, yeah. All righty. Thank you guys for listening. Till next time, same podcast, same episode. Well, not same episode, but different one. But you know what I mean. Nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Later. Bye.